Yeah, let's see. Well, Michael, you want to tell us anything new that's going on in the world? Uh, Billy Meyer's new book. You want to drop a little information about that? Oh, you mean the one or that's the going? New... It is. Oh, I'm sorry. The newest contact report, maybe. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. The newest contact report as of today, when we're doing this show, I titled it, I think I titled it, There Is No Place to Hide. And that's mm-hmm. because, among other things, now Billy reveals fascinating information about the past, about how the Sahara Desert used to be an ocean and original life forms on the planet, a lot of fascinating stuff. But he goes also into uh, information, presenting information about AI and mm-hmm. about you know more about the American agenda. And so I title it, There Is No Place to Hide, because we have to realize when we read Billy's material, we will get the most accurate information. Now, he also, as in this new uh, you know, contact report, he brings in information from a very uh, intelligent German guy who did a whole 30-minute video presentation on the reality behind the Ukraine war. And that reality, of course, is the U.S. Uh, you know, agenda for hegemony. And when you put all this together, when you read the entire contact report, you realize that truly there is no place to hide. And this is why I am really against most of what is ufology, because it's a distraction. It's irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. It's destructive, really. When you have Meyer's material, and he's always publishing before. I, I put out a blog a few days ago. This is a side note, but just to tell you, scientists discovered that there's 19,000 undersea volcanoes. Billy Meyer, through Svath, published that there's hundreds of thousands of them, and he published that in the 1940s and said these are the most active volcanoes. And Billy, in in we have a you know short film out with Billy, uh, introduction to the spiritual teaching in everyday life, and in there Billy was talking about. Indonesia is going to go under what? Well, that started already with undersea volcano. This stuff is so vitally important that I, f- I frankly wish on every level that anybody sincerely interested and you know intelligent enough to follow through with uf- UFOs and all would start to focus on this material. It's the only, only authentic contact case the only one, you know, like the backdrop here, these are, you know, a couple dozen of Meyer's photographs. Irreproducible. Nobody has evidence like this. And nobody has any significant information for us. None. It's a distraction. It's entertainment. And it's it's mind-numbing because it takes people away from the stuff that Billy and the Play Iron have been trying to warn us about for decades, and it's upon us now, and it's coming in great force. When we realize, if, if we read the new blog, you know, because we're talking about that, and this guy, I think his name is Martin Verle, and a German guy, and he, the transcript is in our, you know, Billy's contact. He's talking about that we are not approaching World War Three. We're basically in, you know, in, I don't even know if he knows about Billy's material, but he's echoing. And he's citing a lot of the more informed political or governmental scientific sources to show he's right. We are at such a precipice in the world. It doesn't mean that tomorrow, you know, the bomb gets dropped by somebody. It doesn't mean that it doesn't. It means that this is coming because of the insidious, diabolical, destructive, delusional agenda of the country that I live in and two of our friends here live in, I think. <laughs> and we, we, we do not grasp this because Americans as a mass have been dumbed down successfully to a pathetic level. I just was in a supposed interview, I think it was Friday, I had this thing I was contacted by these guys. Oh, we want to discuss the Billy Meyer case with you and send us any films. And we're really interested to do this. And 
right before the show started, oh, we've watched 30 videos. And then really what it evolved, and these guys were skeptics who were supported by another skeptic who tried the same thing, which was to pretend to be interested, but to have all this skeptical material. And as soon as they'd ask me a question, I started to ask it, they'd throw in stuff on top of it. So it was, it was really a mess. It was like one of those interviews, like, why am I doing this? I didn't realize till almost an hour into it, this is just a setup. These guys don't want to know. And then I found that one of the guys spoke up who was kind of in the wings on it. And he was one of the guys that pulled the same stunt on me a few years ago. So I just let it sit for a couple of days. And then I put up because I didn't respond. You know, they, they actually spent 90 minutes from what I understand after the interview, bringing that other guy on and all, you know, just attacking Meyer and me and the, all this stuff. So I dropped in one long quote. I said, you know, all you have to do is please show how these experts are wrong. And I brought in, you know, where, you know, the, the, the people and a couple of quote, you know, quotes here and there, but I had well over 30 links to, you know, the testing and individual experts, the astronaut, Gordon Cooper, Joe Tisk, NASA and aerospace engineer, Matthew Wiskwit. Well, so far, while they still try and snipe there, nobody, nobody that posts there can will address it and mm -hmm. so i just put on a few quotes saying this is typical of what ufology is it's a bunch of morons who get together who know nothing nothing of use but they want to make a buck and they want to become successful and create controversy and the best way to do that is to attack anything that's genuine and then you have on a bunch of idiots that you interview who don't know anything jeremy reese who has an alien scientist uh, channel Attack Billy Mark couldn't substantiate any of it. So hmm. this is this is loved by the US government, the Secret Services and all, because these fools do their bidding, whether they know it or not, to distract and just get everybody look over here and look over there. Meanwhile, Astro asteroid Apophis comes towards Earth. Meanwhile, a third world war has been set in motion by the US and NATO and Germany and Ukraine and Russia. And meanwhile, Billy writes in this report about the extent of chemical poisoning through every, every food, every herb and tea and this and that. We, we live in a, in a fool's paradise. We think it's about this. And so these guys, when I said, tried to say to them on that interview, this isn't about the UFOs. It's about, oh, well, why do you have photos of you? I said, it's very simple. People are interested and this is the best evidence they'll ever see. And if they come to see it, then on the same blog we've got, they'll start to discover the higher standard of proof, the prophecies and predictions, and then come down to the core of the material as they start coming through reality into the creation energy teaching. These guys didn't want to know anything about it. They they just wanted to attack. And it's just typical of so many people. This is the country of attack. And I'll say one more thing, because you, you just triggered a lot for me. The other night we were watching, you know, going through Netflix and these different things. And there was this new thing, I forget where it's on. It's called the Citadel. Mm -hmm. And we watched, I think the first 20 minute episode. This is a film or a, video series, and I couldn't watch any more than that, made by and for psychopathic degenerates. It means it's made for the majority of the American public. <laughs> the violence present in, in that introduction, I mean, I like good adventure stuff. I like thrillers and espionage related things where people are clever and you have to figure things out. Not where a man literally walks up to three people and blows their brains out and people are on a train or are, are being just blown away second by second. This is what America loves. Look at the news headlines. America loves it because every day some moron somehow has taken this in as permissible, all of this stuff, not just this new series. And it's killing people randomly because they can't deal with their own life, their psyche and all. So it's not a small matter then that ufology is just the playground of idiocy. It contributes nothing 
That's been done. UFOs, you're interested? Here it is, Billy Meyer. You want real evidence? And then you want to know or you don't want to know the reason for the contacts. And that reason is to help us assure our own threat into future survival. And right now, as it becomes clearer and clearer in the contact reports, we better not kid ourselves. This is more than likely not going to make it that long before such levels of destruction are unleashed that whatever we do now that we can preserve like Myers material and you know primarily it's intended for the survivors it'd be good to be among them but this isn't for most people today and we have to keep on because you know new people are coming into consciousness and they will be among the survivors some of them but I mean for the survivors Make no mistake about what this country is bringing on the world and has been moving towards for a couple hundred years. And now when Meyer explains the extent already unknown to the public of AI and what it's going to do to us, because all these shallow techno turds are out there just enthralled with the toys, what they can do with technology with no conscience, no consciousness, no morals, no ethics, just the greed for the power, the money, the celebrity. So that's what I've been up to. What are you guys doing? <laughs> pretty good. Wow. Man, that's pretty Ricky, intense. Ricky, can you can you relate you to what you just heard? Uh, definitely. It's, uh, you know, I mean, psychologically, Watching movies like that is, isn't good for your psyche. Uh, if anything, you should refrain from from you know anything negative like that. And, and you know you're feeding your your mind bad bad food basically. And mm -hmm. as Michael said, yeah, it, it's we need like I was speaking with you earlier too. We need to come together as one as humanity. We, uh, you know the way things are going right now. It's, it's, no, this is this isn't going to do it. How are we going to stop a meteor? You know coming towards earth whenever we're at war with each other you know how are we going to explore space or anything whenever we're worried about this country is going to blow our country up you know while we're doing all this is you know humanity has to come together to make this work the right way if not we're going to be caught up that that certain creek without paddles yeah we definitely have to pump the brakes on the ai too a little bit i think it's coming it's a little bit too, too crazy yeah it's yeah. too late yeah. I mean, you know, I hate to say, it. look, Billy spelled it out in 1987 See? when these Damn. computer controlled weapons can no longer be controlled by wow. human beings. They're self controlling and they turn against humankind. We are at the threshold of that. And wow. there are things that we probably have not been informed about that have already happened. Some that have leaked out about how these certain things are already, you know, demonstrating. Uh, completely amoral, you know, actions that are, these things are programmed, you know, this is a, an expression of earth human consciousness on steroids with the focus on destruction, control and power. And these things are seeking that already for themselves. It's what they've been programmed for ultimately. And mm -hmm. humankind will pay that the price for that. Uh, we don't have that perspective of other, call them civilizations or societies, human societies, that have existed before us here and on other worlds that have destroyed themselves and sent themselves back to their own stone ages if they were lucky. This is it. We are lost in fantasy land. And in that 1958 letter, Billy talks about how people will lose their ability to distinguish reality from fantasy, how the eye will be tricked, talk about fake this and fake that these days. So the, the human being, the individual, is at a great disadvantage in mass, or en masse, if you want to put it that way. And without this teaching available to them, what do they have? Religion? The, the 
and politics the ugly, poisonous twin siblings? Religion and politics dumb you down, enslave minds, and promote war. Great. So that's that. What, what are people to do? Philosophies and belief systems and there's there's not enough there unless you just realize that as Billy says, we are the Smith, we forge our own destiny. And the best support for that, you know, the best tools, the hammer and the metal for it is the teaching. And it's a it's beautiful. Any book you pick up from Billy, even if it's the only book you ever own, you'd be rereading it and relearning and learning anew for years and decades, you know, this is the eye candy, the UFOs, it's great, but you follow, there's nothing any of us interested in UFOs can do with it other than the tie-in to more advanced human beings who've suffered and gone through their own evolution and made it out of these ages of stupidity and belief, which we are still stuck in and they came here they demonstrate harmlessness to us freely given benevolent advice and recommendations no threats nothing it's foreign to us because the human kind of earth has been polluted we know for eons by the you know the genetic manipulations but we own the whole we're in we own the dread you know the dreadful stuff that exists between our ears and in our psyches. You know, like you just said, Ricky, you know, about how bad that is for the psyche, those kind of things. That is about the worst thing I ever came upon TV. And, and of course, you know, it draws you, I, I watched long enough to observe, this is very well made. This is no expense has been spared. The decor, the realism of people being blown to bits and trains and wow, this is, the American people are, are going to love it. I think they do already. And so it's expressed in the national psyche, in the consciousness of people. This, this country every day, practically now, there's a, some mass shooting, meaning more than just one or two people, and on and on. And it's not just because, it's not because this has just gone on to TV or whatever. It's because this is a reflection of the absolute crap of consciousness that exists as the, the baseline in America, where we elevate these decrepit, power-hungry morons into high office, and they are controlled, unbeknownst for the most part to the population, by hugely powerful interests, Black Rock and this and that and that, this family, that. What? The average person, Billy said it years ago, all you can do is stick your hands in your pockets. Well, while you're there, you know, flip a coin and decide which book you're going to read that day. Because while we can't bring down, at this stage of the game, we can't bring down this government. It's doing, it'll bring itself down. Billy said, America will destroy itself. And that is true, but it's going to take down a lot of good people and other countries in the process, maybe. So, we turn to that, which connects us to life and to nature. We get out, spend time in nature. You know, I'm working with certain things to find fairly easily available, let's say amino acids, different things that help people to deal with the stress, to sleep better, you know, certain little things that are adjuncts because one of my main focuses for a long, long time has been health practices and finding out what works and, and what, you know, may not be so good. And sharing it with people, you know, in a non, uh, not as a business, but just through, through things. So we all have to find out individually now what's important, what what nourishes us, how do we nourish ourselves and others, and reach out if someone's interested. Don't try to press push this on anybody, and focus on the truth. I don't know. It's a little depressing at times, folks. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you too, it's maybe a little bit off subject, but um, did Billy Meyer ever meet Eric von Däniken back in the 70s when they're both kind of getting popular with Eric coming out with his book, Chariots of the Gods, and then um, Billy Meyer coming out with his photographs and um, some of his books? I 
don't recall if they actually met. It's possible. Or that mm-hmm. Billy saw a presentation of his, something like that. Of sure. course, Pata and Billy have discussed, you know, whatever Donakin got right and what he's gotten wrong, as is the case, you know, with most things. There's any number of people that have gotten pieces of the puzzle, but because they don't have access, the access that Meyer, Meyer has seen these things in history mm-hmm. I, you know, for himself through the good graces of, you know, Sloth must have been another one of the most amazing human beings ever to walk the earth. And then Sloth refers to Askett as being more evolved than he is. So, you know, you go, oh, holy cow, what's this about? <laughs> so to answer your question, I don't know. And I don't think, Ricky, what do you, do you remember in the contact reports reading anything about I, that? I was telling them, I really don't remember a contact report mentioning it, but there are there is a photo, I believe, of, of Eric Von Daniken at at the at Billy's house, or maybe he's looking at some photos of uh, of, of Billy's. It's possible. I really can't remember. Yeah, yeah I was just curious. It, yeah, and I think there isn't Eric Van Dunnigan Swiss as well. He, yeah, he's from Switzerland. Uh, I don't know if he's from not far maybe from Zurich or something regionally, or but yeah, yeah. Switzerland. Is, I think is where he lives. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well, Michael, I really want to hear more about your movie. It's called And Did They Listen? Since you posted it a few days ago, I think. Oh, and, yeah. And I haven't seen it yet. Please tell me a little bit more about your movie. Yeah, I would I to do that. You know what I have to do? I've got to bring up um, my shop where I've got it uh, because people can you know download it, digital downloads. And I've got to read what what it says about it to remind myself of any specifics okay because um a lot of stuff you know do it move along and it goes pretty quickly so what we have in here oh okay so i'll I'll read what it says (laughs) on a mission from the depths of space well it says hidden in plain sight for decades the most important story in human history On a mission from the depths of space, one man risked his life to reveal the long hidden ancient secrets to the people of earth, overcoming millennia of religious intrigues, political suppression and numerous assassination attempts. Billy Edward Albert Meyer, the prophet of the new time brought the eternally true spiritual teaching with its promise of true love, peace, freedom and harmony. The long foretold prophecies and predictions of wars, environmental disasters, and social upheaval had already begun, and humankind was offered one final chance to rewrite its future history, learn the truth about the only scientifically authenticated extraterrestrial UFOs, most prophetically accurate scientific information ever published, the still unrecognized magnitude of destruction from Fukushima and BP, the former skeptic who now calls the Billy Meyer case amazing and astonishing, the coming danger from asteroid apophis that NASA won't admit, and the UN ambassador who met Asket from the Dahl universe. It includes special features about the spiritual teaching, about the 5,100-year-old Iceman and the vanquished skeptics in the UFO industry. The brand new film, and did they listen? Now it's brand nine-year-old film. (laughs) It's not brand new anymore. It's just that it's more accurate all the time. You know, it's like, oh, well, did we make this yesterday because we're talking about this that's happening now? No, that's Billy Meyer. And like Ricky just mentioned, our film, As the Time Fulfills, uh, you know, I put that together in 2011, 2012 with 55 of the prophetically accurate examples. Out of At that time, we already knew of about 150, but I grabbed 55 and put them in the film, one after the other, just hoping that people would wake up you know and (laughs) everything just keeps on rolling because people are idiots what can you do i'm sorry (laughs) yeah so true (laughs) it was a great presentation though the way you i mean like i said that was the the icing on the cake for me i was like wow this is 
you know, as you presented it, how does this man know this much of so many different subjects? You can't, you can't fake that. You can't. <laughs> I don't care how you slice it. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just, it's so my See, the pro, here's the problem. You have so much fantastic UFO information. Okay. And then you have so many examples of prophetically accurate scientific geopolitical information. People, it's like, oh, wow, the Tic Tac video. There's a one video, you know, and everybody looks at this video game video from the Air Force. And, you know, that just, they sit there, you know, like drooling, like, you know, puppies or a cat watching somebody drag something across the floor. And then you have got, you've got hundreds of examples and people can't process it because they'd actually have to think and look at it and think some more. And then, you know, with these prophecies and predictions, I I think I've told the story, I don't know if you know this, Ricky, but a couple of years back, we went up to a place here in, in Northern Arizona called the USGS. And there was a scientist there. His name is Ken Herkinoff, a very nice guy, by the way. A lot of these people are nice, but, he, but here he's working on the imaging from the Mars rover, right? I come up, I asked to see him. I didn't have an appointment. Very nice. He comes out. You know, hey, how can I help you? I say, well, let me give you three pages of info. And when you have time, respond if you would. It was Myers' prophetically accurate information about black holes and Mars and all this stuff. The guy writes back. He doesn't know what to do with it. He, uh, could these be lucky guesses? I said, no, I don't think so, Ken. You know, uh, 12 years before we launched the Mars Odyssey, he predicts it by name. Uh, no, it's not a lucky guess. Well, he tries to come back. He says, well, Lightning on Mars. I've never heard of it. So I, I go online and finally in 2009, 30 years or whatever after Meyer publishes it, NASA discovers. They discover lightning on Mars, right? So he then he writes me back after I show it to me, he says, Well, I hope you're not gonna try to make me, you know, convince me of this. I said, Well, of course I am. You're a scientist. You should be able to rebut it, right? Tell me why it's wrong. Yeah. He just clammed up like they all do. They just want to protect. It's like this idiot from, uh, you know, a NASA astronomer who discovered, he thinks he discovered Apophis with two of his friends in, uh, what was it, 2004. So I published an article saying, you know, scientists discovered Apophis 23 years after Billy Meyer. Well, this guy loses. He just writes these nasty, cynical, smug, can't refute anything from Meyer. But that's what happens with these guys. See, everybody's been so infected with this celebrity, money, fame thing that if you just sh show them truth that they don't, they can't dismiss, they can't discredit, and they can't take credit for, they lose it. You've got this dolt, pardon me. Another nice guy I spoke with briefly, but he's a dolt, Avi Loeb. Ah, space rock, extraterrestrials, a billion dollars, go search the oceans. Yeah, you want to sell more books because you're a sellout and you don't have an intrinsic concern for human life on this planet. So you're going to chase a piece of space rock and you're a very nicely spoken fellow, but I'd invite you to come on and have a little discussion. I've had people, a scientist, his name was Robin Hansen, and he babbled on for about 20 minutes about everything he thought he knew. And then when I start to show him this stuff and talk about it, the guy starts doing this. And he's squirming around because he's out of his league. They don't know anything. But it's profitable to play off of the gullible suckers that UFOs and UAP. Hey, I'm an investigator. You know, please. <laughs> you know, these are all these people think, I don't know what happens where you've got all these sites. And a lot of nice burger flippers are there. And they, they well, your evidence, Mr. Hunt, you, you know, as if they know anything. And so I wrote to one guy today. I said, look, it's like a bunch of clowns get together and invite a university physics professor to come because they want to discuss it with him. And the guy doesn't know that they're clowns. So he accepts the invitation. And what they, they don't want to discuss it. They want to try to ridicule it, make fun of it, and all this stuff because they want to teach the class that they are light years away from being able to attend. That's what ufology is filled with. Yes, People would do themselves a big service. 
<laughs> to get away from because the people that follow this stuff, I'm sorry, and I, I'm sorry if I offend anybody. I'm not really sorry, but I want to because I'd rather people get a glass of cold water in their faces and realize you don't know anything. And these people that are babbling at you with their story, well, I was floated through a wall and I recall they don't know anything either. They don't know anything. And it's a nice way to spend 40 minutes if you want to escape the ugly reality of wor the world. But now you've gone backwards because you fill your head with mush that has no substance. And one guy today, and I'll stop lecturing on this, on that channel, he wrote three critical emails towards me, criticizing my delivery and all that stuff. And then there was something he, he said, and I, I simply said, well, something about check out this information if you really want to. And then he said something about thank you. You know, he actually wrote back like thank you. I said, you're welcome. And um, I, if you can show that you have, you know, some background, some can think, I'd be glad to interview you so that you could try to make a, your substan a substantiated claim against the evidence. But you'd have to study this stuff first. You'd have to demonstrate that you know what I've just given you as your homework. And I said, I'd rather speak to an intelligent skeptic than a bunch of idiot UFO believers any day because they just believe and they want to be entertained. And if you're genuine and you want to come at this case on a factual basis, let's do that. I don't take it personally. I don't even care the fact that you've posted three negative comments about me. It's about, do you want to rise to the occasion? And come and discuss this and maybe people will benefit from that so we'll see what happens and now i will shut up for a while because like... <laughs> now we got joanna here to join us too here hi Who's there? we got joanna here hi michael hi joanna <laughs> hello ricky i haven't met you before hello. nice to see you nice to meet you ricky's also a fan of your work joanna uh he follows oh, you on youtube so yeah, the ET I thought, room, I, right? <laughs> <laughs> no i uh, i thought um it'd be a fun conversation to get you all for uh well, i don't know where daniel is he's off camera but anyways um yeah i thought we get all together and have fun well i just <clears throat> yeah. got the, the end of uh what you were saying michael so i don't know the substance of it i just know you know you're talking about validity and and uh, that kind of thing. And I, and I just it put an interview up with uh, Robert Salas, which took me ages to get it. <laughs> he, he wasn't going to be doing this anymore. And then he said, I don't know that anybody knows what I'm talking about when um, I cite the Peter Finch film uh, called Network from 1976. Um, and when he he's um, he, he's um, an anchor and uh, anyway, basically, there's a very famous scene and he just goes on a rant and says, I've had it. I can't take it anymore. It's enough. And I'm not going to something like that. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> and, had it, um, no, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Better than I said it. And when um, I, and I really wanted to speak to um, Robert Salas. Also because I knew he just not long ago given his testimony to uh, the new body arrow or arrow or however we're pronouncing it. And I, and I thought, oh, this is going to be interesting. And he, we left it to the end or I left it to the end. And he said, I'm as mad as hell. And he said, and I'm not giving up or whatever he said. It's, uh, it's on the video. And he just said, you know, at this age, he said, I've done it for 25, 30 years. I really didn't want to be pushing the envelope again for the whole thing he said but I have to I absolutely have to he said so my hat's back in the ring he said I was hoping to retire from it all well, and, I um, I, it was be sorry well, I was just gonna say it was because you know this sort of formalized body uh, and, and it was uh, absolutely as I thought it would be and he said it's just a farce you know, and uh, here we go again. So anyway, it was just interesting. It was sort of tying in with the energy of Michael. Uh, right. Of what I, your comment I, I, if you could uh, do one or both of two things. One, send him a link uh, to my blog and and send me a contact info for him because he, he's one of the people who has more credibility. You know, he's been around a long time 
and he was been in, in this, you know, in the, I believe it's military intelligence or something, Air Force, whatever. And even though he uh, might be skeptical about uh, the Meyer case or whatever, if he realized what it contained and how badly it's been suppressed, and it's way ahead in, of anything he knows about, to be honest, but it'd be great because he is, he is knowledgeable and he would yes. probably respect the, uh, you know, the uh, info pertaining to the UFO self fighters we found and uh, uh, Joe Tisk, the USAF OSI Department of Defense guy. So I'd like to get, you know, at least an outreach to him. We do reach out to lots of people. A pitiful small number will reply because they all know better, of course. And then, you know, we get what we get in the world because people who could benefit and could help don't. Yeah, it did take me quite a, a lot of perseverance to um, get him to agree. And I don't think he's on Facebook a lot. That was my first point of contact, just just so you know. But of course, I will do that in the, and I'll happily send you a link to the uh, interview, um, which Great. was which was just you know, it was interesting about the arrow you know like another body here we go again and um same old same old so it, it's it's down to us <laughs> i predicted it last september when they first had those hearings and i was on this big show with a guy named clayton morris redacted and i yeah. told him what the outcome oh, yeah. of that would be. and if you replay that video it's the same as these hearings people have to understand they're the agenda is to suppress the truth, promote the vague info about UFOs, make it UFO threat because it's all about weapons, war, more funding for those things. Yeah. Nothing about anything good. Yeah, I did watch the I, I did watch um, Sean Patrick talking, you know, giving his um, overview, if you like, to to Gilly Brand and uh, whomsoever. And uh, <laughs> and uh, as Robert Salas said, you know, there's a bit of fine tap dancing there. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just it's the same thing again, isn't it? It's it's the grassroots folks, um, j j you know, and yourself, Michael. I've done, you know, I'm a big Billy Meyer fan. I have to say it straight off the the bat, and I have been for a long time. And also, I think I might have mentioned this just in uh, on another show when we were talking about this and when I interviewed Bob Brown who was one of the founders along with Wendell Stevens actually of the International UFO Congress which is an interview I did back in 2013 I think um, anyway but it was just a short interview and and we weren't talking about Billy Meyer at all and then uh, and then he's then he'd heard about Billy Meyer and he'd been talking to I think Linda Moulton Howe, who was I think going to be going to investigate. It was um, um, I, I can't remember the year, but anyway. So so before I, I think I think was I think Wendell had begun doing his work then with him. I can't just recall. You have to excuse me for that. But anyway, in the interview with Bob Brown, he said. The, the biggest reason that I know that Billy Meyer is the real deal, and it's interesting to, to hit, listen to Bob say this as well, uh, and um, you may want to see that, Michael, if you haven't seen that little interview that I did from all those years ago and when I was a brunette, <laughs> was, um, was that APRO um, and uh, NICAP, both of them had wanted exclusives on, on the Billy Meyer material and because he had already said, yes, you know, come over and that, that will be fine. Um, but he said no to any exclusive, that this is for the world. And so Bob Brown said they both those bodies torpedoed Billy Meyer's work from then on. And that was why that was one of the main reasons it got suppressed. Yes, I, uh, I know Bob Brown, and I've lectured several times at the conference. Yeah. There, Bob actually, in the beginning, did the world a great service, along with well, Wendell is in a league of his own. And he teamed up. Actually, I think they first teamed up around 1989 or so. And, and uh, Bob Brown was responsible then for helping to bring Wendell and the Meyer case forward, then Randy Winters, and then... I and Wendell and I and things like this. However, unfortunately, Bob Brown sold out to this Open Minds group and some other people, perhaps, who uh, really are the enemies of the Meyer case. 
what they do, and I know this from firsthand experience, firsthand experience being there, they uh, attack the Meyer case, and then they sell his photos and posters of his photos at the same time. They uh, bought from Wendell uh, lots of Meyer, uh, of Wendell's archives and material from you know of the Meyer material and stashed it away so people can't see it. And they went at any opportunity suppress. So Bob Brown became uh, part of the opposition. He sold out this group, Open Minds. And if you'll notice, the the IUFOC conferences, of course, continue on with all the people who don't know anything coming to the podiums to present the latest sensations. And the Meyer material is not represented there. It, it nobody comes forward to present it, and they don't have anyone. So it's it's true, and the APRO and NICAP or whatever people and others and MUFON, which Billy was told in '53 would become his greatest enemy, in effect. Oh, really? Um, mm. Yeah. What people don't know about MUFON, and it was revealed by a guy who has a top secret uh, clearance, who's in the aerospace industry, who was solicited by MUFON to join because he's very high-ranking guy, and what MUFON revealed to him, which he then revealed and we published, is that the best evidence that MUFON field investigated, any photos or films or anything, are turned over to the CIA or State Department by MUFON. Wow. And that is the real, the real agenda there, apart from having people run around and chase their tails and chase lights in the sky, any evidence is turned over because so many UFOs are and have been secret military craft. There's other stuff, but largely secret military. So they can gain it from looking at or have already gained the best of it, whatever, from looking at videos, films, photos, how those craft appear, if there's any of the technology to uh, you know, shield them or whatever they're working on if that is apparent from this evidence and other things that I don't know anything about. But MUFON is a front organization and all of the nice people that run around thinking that they're field investigators really just chase lights in the sky and do whatever. And it's a very cynical thing. So as we were saying before you came on, Joanna, uh, we are in a lot of trouble as a humankind. And you're not going to find a way out through any of that stuff. It's going to be anyway. I've said it. You know, keep on eating up time with that, but it's yeah. so important. Well, with Sean Kirkpatrick, I think as well, Doctor Sean Kirkpatrick heading up Arrow. Um, you know, as Bob Salas also said, you you know, he's been part of the intelligence community for a very long time. In out in all kinds of roles linking with that and directly involved so here we go yeah. <laughs> I, I they ask for the photos you know we have nine photos of the stealth and the ufo they ask for them i send them and then they suppress it and, and it's i knew it would happen but i decided let's see what happens i'll send them as a request and no one nobody in ufology and i offer every time i get a chance wants to talk about those photos wants to examine investigate discuss them they don't want to rock the boat they want to chase their crap lights in the sky stuff here's you know with nine photos ask gets ufo stealth plane coming in and around circling around this um one photo up here is a montage that was done by jaime Mossan's got a friend uh, i reposted a, a video of his discussing this too but he just shows the stealth comes in, has to get shipped. They're just sitting there, basically. No hostility. There's no attack. So this does not suit the agenda of the warmongers that are foundational to this corrupt country. So the truth, and, and you know, Wendell Stevens risked his life to take those photos. They would have shot him on the spot if they'd have found him at Area 51. Not one of these blathering idiots in ufology wants to talk about that. I have tried to get these to any of the people high profile. There's a guy, named, by the way, there's a guy named Lex Fridman. He's intellectual. He's a professor, AI stuff and this and that. He interviews all the, you know, all the so-called experts. 
he won't he won't even respond to any of the Meyer material. And of course, you know, Joe Rogan and there's a Brett Weinstein, all of these know-it-alls, they don't want they're, they're overnight experts. They won't discuss this. There goes their position. They're reduced to the moron level that they are in terms of knowing anything of significance and daring to bring it forward to the public. So those of us connected to my blog, connected to freedom, uh, future of humankind, to Figo and all that, we are certainly in comparison to people, very small viewerships, but people still are coming in from around the world to all sources to find out more despite this agenda, because as Billy says, there aren't enough shovels to bury the truth. <laughs> I didn't hear exactly what was being said um, about the Mars uh, side of things. I sort of came in on that. But um, I, again, j j uh, and this is just something, uh, and may maybe it's too random, but I, I interviewed a scientist called John Brandenburg some a long time ago when I did the Amash files. And he talked about, he became very controversial because he talked about how, from his research, it seemed that there'd been a nuclear explosion on Mars, just talking really, I'm bringing this in, because I know it sounds a bit random, but talking about the Mars and all kinds of different things going on everywhere, actually, all kinds of different things, but he'd he'd found evidence and that was very controversial and his, his uh, colleagues, scientific colleagues, weren't too impressed with the fact that he found that there was had been a nuclear explosion on Mars, which had ripped off the atmosphere. But he said it wasn't on the land. It was exploded above. And right. this was, you know, many donkeys years ago. So, you know, there's 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 been wars, there's been all kinds of things and all kinds of activities that, you know, we can only hazard a guess at. And maybe, you know, Billy knows about from from his time travel and that was something so I don't know whether that's of interest or helpful but it it just as I heard Mars uh, you know I thought you, you know of that um that moment when John was describing that and how has, has spoken uh, about the information pertaining to Mars and more than likely what uh, Brandenburg you know was referring to may have been when the destroyer comet came through the solar system and basically you know upended mars if you will uh there have been nuclear wars on another planet that used to exist in the solar system that is now the asteroid belt billy didn't mention nuclear war on mars but rather the destruction from the destroyer now if you want to know about uh more uh, ancient recent nuclear wars and then the remnants of them uh exist on earth in places like death valley yeah, and India Mumbai. is a huge, is it Mumbai? There's a massive um, well, area, isn't there? A massive crater. I, yeah, there, not, all those places that are out here in the Southwest, there are places in the Middle East where there had also been that kind of conflagration. And uh, the true history of Earth and the true history of humankind is nothing like what you know we're led to believe, only something like it really. But the true history, uh, Meyer has seen it, he's reported on it, and even in today's uh, recently published contact report on the blog and elsewhere, he speaks about some of the things he saw in the past, and, uh, you know, he, he lets a little of this out at a time. It's fascinating because we, it, it, this man has seen things through his own eyes, or at least, let's say, according to what Meyer says, according to the information of the case. And what we do know is that his prophetic accuracy, whenever something can be checked, either verified or discredited, it's error-free and it's accurate all the time. So we're, we get the truth from Meyer and the play Aaron, in my opinion. We get 90% lies from our politicians, government, religions, and we have to become free-thinking, independent human beings ourselves, each little individual Life has a way in time. If enough people start clicking in, they don't have to run around and scream it to the world and just start to develop themselves along creational lines of laws and recommendations. Maybe the survivors will ultimately rebuild a world based on those principles. 
in 800 or more years. What's the farthest um, Billy's ever gone back in time? I know uh, I, I've heard mention of dinosaurs, but I just wondered if there was... Um, if Way beyond that. Millions yeah. and millions of years. He's seen and he's described to some degrees at times things before the formation of the earth or before, you know, when it was still a gaseous ball and, and then the primeval times and well before the dinosaurs and, uh, you know, the comings and goings of not only extraterrestrials, but of humankind on earth, the peoples that arose and disappeared and land masses that used to exist and no longer do. So uh, that information, I have a feeling there'll be more of it put into books that'll be coming out. There is a new book coming out in August. It'll, it's not about that material necessarily, but um, we'll have that book available for people. His book, from the depths of outer space is, is just staggeringly beautiful. I mean, that's the best adventure story anybody could ever read. And it's all, you know, real life from Billy Meyer, past, present, and future. And that, you know, we, I advertise that book because it's a book that anybody could read. I've never been that interested in, in sci-fi. And once I got into the Meyer material, I was only less interested in sci-fi because there's no sci-fi that compares with the reality that this man has seen and lived already. So it's it's way beyond anything. It's the reality of the the ancestors of the Pleiar and the, the Lyrans or Lyrians, as some people call it, whatever. That's Star Wars on steroids. That's the real deal. And the Pleiar, 52,000 years of peace in their world, as they finally set that stuff down and evolved out of that. These Their forefathers were these giant extraterrestrials High tech warriors, man, it's like that's a whole other thing. And then they had to come to terms with their destructiveness, and they were highly advanced in their technological and you know consciousness skills, but their spiritual development needed a big upgrade. And they got it about 52,000 years ago. And uh, we're not fortunate enough to be able to get that kind of an inter you know uh, intervention. We've got a the best thing for us, the intervention from the play iron, that actually goes back 13,000 plus years. And here we are, and we're still on the brink of ex extinguishing ourselves from, the, from life, literally. What am I selling? What's wrong with people? Has, I... uh, has uh, Billy in Ascot ever traveled to Ascot's home planet in the Dell universe? I think Billy has. I think Billy has been to the Dell Universe. He's been innumerable times, probably or at least innumerable, to the uh, the Play Iron World of Era, mm -hmm. and you know, and they've shown him whole other worlds of different. And they've been to another universe in addition to the Dahl and the uh, you know, this universe. They the Play Iron entered into another universe that they. I don't know if they took Billy there, but they did describe it the people's living there are very peaceful people their technology is somewhere around 1953 for this world but they they don't pollute their world uh, they mm. do things that are you know more in line with that time without pollution so they're not burning fossil fuels and stuff and they recognize you know the higher power of life and they're not religious so hopefully we never find them and destroy their peace Right. And hopefully they don't destroy it either. But, you know, uh, look, we're not going to be space travelers. It doesn't, it's not really on the agenda. It, uh, the, the future survivors, uh, if they do survive, if this world survives and re-evolves up, there will be, you know, an Earth humankind that will return ultimately into the Syrian constellation. But that's not what we see today. You know, t throwing tin cans at the moon or Mars is not space travel. And it's um, it's not the cards for us. We're too destructive. So it'll take a house cleaning of one form or another. Will Apophis hit? Will it be 2029 or maybe more likely 2036? What about the coming wars that are just going to be all destructive? So, uh, we you know, we shouldn't dream about venturing to the stars too much. We should make our dreams into a reality of creating a world here that's livable and balanced and harmonious, peace, love, freedom, you know. 
that's the way I see it. You know, you you read Meyer's stuff and it just takes you places. Space. Yeah, I have again. I have a few of his books. Like I love his, pitch, his big picture books. The I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> but again i just love the it's like a big nice coffee table book you know with these gigantic pictures yep we've got you know yeah. this the, the newest one you know the photo book where's my uh gigantic one too you have to see here the second volume it's of like, that one you know it's like we have all, all these books oh yeah there you go and there's the you know the photo book is down there and uh oops over here how many books has he written now? 70? Well, he's written over 60 books. We've got, I think there's 10 in English and we have them all. Wow. And I tell you, people just would benefit so much. So much. It would just put your mind at ease. And, you know, you don't fall into such despair about this planet stupid side that you feel, excuse me, I think I must have gotten on the wrong ride i i'm not i don't belong here you know everybody people that are aware and kind of, just feel like uh -oh. but we belong here to try to do what we can do and many people you know have a deep and long commitment to the mission through other personalities other incarnations belonging to other space traveling races but right now as they say this is now and we're here and this is what we got to work with ricky do you have something to add? Please. Yeah, uh, actually, I have a question for Michael. Um, in one of the interviews I think you did with uh, with Dustin and, and Daniel, uh, did you mention that you had reached out to uh, to Graham Hancock? Oh yeah, yeah. What was what was his response? Basically, he didn't want to deal with anything. Nothing. About it. <laughs> he, you know, you know, he, he's an ayahuasca head doper and in the delusions of things at the level he's got it, whatever he's got, right, bless him. But he's just another one of these guys that there was, there's another one. Uh, I forget his name. I, I wrote to him too and offered him. He's involved with ancient history type of stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, ancient civilizations. And so I thought he'd want to really dig into this. He didn't want any part of it. Uh, they don't, these people are, they fall into the, Ooh, I'm going to be, I'm famous now and I'm making money off of this. What? Billy yeah. Meyer? Why on earth would I point to something like that that's just going to take the wind out of my sails? If I, in my position, say, this guy's got the real information that I couldn't even have access to if I wanted, well, that's what you get from these people. That's why each one of them, I don't care how good they think they are and how important and all that stuff. If you betray the truth for your profit and you betray humankind because you won't help to move it along in its knowledge, you're just another bottom feeder. You know, I don't care how smart. Yeah, that's you what think. I was telling Dustin and them. It's, um, you know, people like Graham Hancock and then you have uh, Eric Von Daniken, like they're putting a lot of work in the, and, but they're scratching the surface because the answers are in the contact reports. Especially, I mean, in the the area where it's titled the history of man, like it, it goes all the way back millions of years. You know, when these beings were coming here to Earth, it explains, you know, why we act the way we do. Of course, because of the Lyrans and, uh, you know, them mating with our or mixing here in, in in Earth with our people, and that's why we can't shake the warfare. I mean, it's just been going on for millions and millions of years, apparently, according to the you know the contact reports. Right, you are. Right, you are. It's all there. It's all there, Ricky and, and guys. It and is. Gals. This is pre antediluvian history, <laughs> which is all right there in the contact reports. These are the names that historians don't even know about. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Yeah. I guess start reading some of those. Hmm. Yeah. Again, there's is. Just, again, there's just so much to choose from, too, with the Billy Meyer context or what kind of books you want to steer towards or you want to concentrate more towards. Um, but yeah. That one, that one about outer space, it's got the swirly cover. I have the book. That one's pretty, I think the raw, raw, raw. Uh, oh, er, er, er. Yeah. Or, or, I'm sorry. Er, er, er. I'm sorry. Got the, yeah, that's, yes. that was, you know, the, the, the fundamental question in my life since I was a child was really what came before the beginning? 
how far does space go? How can there be nothing? It's a, you know, comma, comma, comma question or questions. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how did the, how did, I, I even said, it was with Billy eight or nine years ago, 10 years ago. I said, Billy, you know, uh, the creation, it's, it's fascinating, but I want to know what's that thing sitting in? What's the void? What came before the creation? How? He said, well, we really don't know. The play Aaron don't know. But in the book, Billy tells more. And it's still pretty mind-boggling because ultimately he still says the unknowable, the unspeakable. He, he, he can tell us what the first appearance of anything in the nothing was. But still, it's the eternal existential mystery. And this, if people even bothered to contemplate these things, but they're, they, they're so hemmed in with religion and God created, you know, this absolute BS, they can't even go to tapping into that unknowableness and realize that everything that they clamor for in this world that they would fight to possess and amass unnecessarily and, and own is nothing. It's just the material stuff. And we float on a speck of cosmic lint on this planet in a little galaxy in a universe that we think is the universe inside of a creation that is inside of an endless nothing. What do you, you want to go bomb the Russians or, you know, go on all the golden Fort Knox for whatever it's worth? It's worthless. All of this is worthless without the contemplation of these mm. deep, deep, deep meanings about life. And Billy says, the meaning of life is the evolution of consciousness. And that holds in it the great secret, you know, for humankind, the great, great progress through evolution of consciousness and everything that that entails and brings that we can't even imagine at our stage of evolution. Well, certainly everybody I've spoken to that I've interviewed, you know, who's in the experience of field or even researcher field who's had some incredible experiences for them. Um, that's what it's done. The, the bottom line, it, the, the two things, the main thing is love. And the other thing is opening the consciousness. And that is, you know, huge, absolutely huge, because it it's um, without the experiences these people would not have, they, their life trajectory would be different. You know, whether they also have had what may be seen or termed, um, you know, traumatic or negative experiences, ultimately it's the same thing. At the end of the day, they feel this expansion and openness such as they would never have done before. And, and that, you know, that is interesting. And I'm really surprised that there isn't a sort of blockbuster film on Billy's life uh, and some sequels to it. I know there's been one or two uh, documentaries, but I mean, no, gosh. There's been, more than there's been probably seven or eight. I mean, the original investigators did it three, four, five piece, uh, you know, pieces. Yes, of, I, I've seen it. it's very, very good, but um, it lends, the material lends itself to, to you know, the big screen as well. And, you know. Yeah, the problem, right. but, but, Joanna, the problem is Meyer's been approached, as you know, by uh, very big filmmakers. Wendell spoke about it. They, see, the, the script has already been written, but it's not good enough for Hollywood filmmakers, they're going to want to make it more exciting and interesting. And it's nothing is even remotely as close. They, If they took the script and decided to make a mega epic in 10 parts or something, and each one was three hours long, whatever, they still would only get service of it. But they just do the script. They have people act it out and use Billy's evidence and footage, and they just do it the way it happened. But they don't want that because... You know, they, they don't get it either. So, uh, who wrote the uh, script, Michael? Was that was that Billy? I'm sorry? Who wrote the script? The script's written. It's the yes, concept you... reports. It's done. Oh, okay. Yeah, within that, okay, done. part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, all you have to do, look, you know, you should, if you haven't, you should see our film, Silent Revolution of Truth, as the time fulfills. Um, and did they listen? I did a, all, before that, I did a thing called the Meyer Contacts, more like a lecture format on the whole thing to our, and 
the, the great films from Wendell and Lee and Britt, uh, who you know paved the way for all this to come out. Uh, and there's some other people maybe that have made some things or have been interviews, but for anybody that wants it, there's plenty of material. There's plenty of material, and there should be more, no question. But Hollywood is lost. I don't think you were here when I was commenting uh, to the guys who know about this. There's a film series on one of these channels who, whatever, called The Citadel. And I managed to watch 15 or 16 minutes of the most gruesome psychopathic material I've ever seen, which is just <laughs> roaring through the ratings because people thrive. They need to see blood. They need their adrenaline pumping. They need to see the destruction of life because they're bankrupt, empty, vapid masses of people. And it's reflected certainly in America. We, it's enacted out in real time in real life by psychopaths who kill their families, other people's families, school children, anything. Because it's now the American psyche is that. That is the consciousness underlying this country. Billy Meyer comes out for peace, love, freedom, and harmony. It's a miracle, truly, that the films that have been made have gotten out at all. Because, you know, not that there aren't you know, attempts to censor it whenever possible, but they just figure, well, maybe it's harmless at this point because we know our market. We know the American people. They want blood. We're going to give it to them. So what are you going to do? Yeah, a... indeed. Well, we know that Travis Walton and Whitley Strieber both, you know, report that their, you know, their, their films were not... Um, they were Holly, Hollywoodized, and uh, well, at least Streber's probably lucky that his films were Hollywoodized because he doesn't have one single piece of actual evidence. He's a sci-fi writer. Please remember, yeah. Joanna. Yeah. And no, as far as Travis Walton goes, I personally, when I met with him and I spoke with him, I felt he was sincere. He was a genuine guy. And what I got from talking to him was he had a real experience. He doesn't really know for sure what it was. He's honest about the whole thing, and he he doesn't have any evidence, but at least he's he's a genuine person, not parading around, pardon me, like Whitley Strieber with a bunch of <laughs> gray aliens knocking on his roof. Perfect for the American public. It's great stuff, but it just throws people into more of the BS, evil alien or mysterious threatening. Now, people like us in other worlds, that's not good enough. You know, it's got to be sensationalized so that people can be kept, you know, delightfully dumb. It's uh, what it is. There, mm -hmm. you know, I think Travis Walton, I, I was impressed enough, 2009, I think it was in New Mexico. And he was just a good straight ahead guy. Now, maybe to come out that he made up the whole thing. I don't think so. I felt he told his truth as he knew it. But, it, and it, as far as it could go, he could only say, this is what my experience was, but he couldn't come, he didn't come away with any evidence like Billy Meyer. He doesn't have contact with people. That's fine. He doesn't need to be Billy Meyer. Look at the trouble he's had just telling his mm. story. As is, you know, as I say, I, I got that he's truthful. Cool. And that's as far as it can go. Whitley Strieber's tales, he's a sci-fi writer and mm, clever guy, but show me one page of evidence no it's not there so whitley please don't complain about how your films were treated you probably made a lot of money from them and that's why you write your books cool actually i was actually i'm glad that you actually said that uh you're very interested in the travis walton case um because again i don't really hear you talk about anybody else's case so it's kind of nice to actually hear that you actually you know, believe yeah, him in a sense down, everybody does you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. No, I, I again, I, I don't want to make. Uh, I just want the people to know that you do uh, believe other cases other than Billy Myers. I, is this good to hear you talk about Travis Walton? That's all. Well, I, I don't believe it. I mean, I could say I think my my reasoning was that Travis Walton is sincere and genuine. Sure. I can't that's tell what the experience was. I've looked at you. Know, people think I haven't. I've been at this thing basically since the 80s and once i got into the meyer case naturally and wendell all these books and cases supposedly but 
there's no there there there's interesting stuff sure and there's sure. stuff that seems like well maybe something to that but there's no evidence there's no evidence sure. there's no evidence so what of what use is it to me it okay it could propel my interest but there's there's nothing there it's like why bother nowadays it's mm. it's that old story about everybody's looking for the mother load the gold mine some miner stumbles into the bar one day and says i found it i found the mother load he's got all this gold in there what and so somebody else walks in and says hey i heard that there's a mine somewhere that might be and it's a, and anybody with any brains in that bar says excuse me this guy here he found the mother load He's got the map, and guess what? He's giving it away for free. That's what the Meyer case is. Mm -hmm. Again, why bother? Why entertain ourselves in a world where everything is coming in, coming down on humankind and the planet? Why do we want to watch cartoons about the real thing? Cartoons, make-believe. People who imagine they had an experience or they had an experience. Look, I'm sorry. People say, well, I'm an experience. What does that mean? You saw something in the sky. You think somebody floated into your room and it was glowing and telling you stuff. That's nice. It's, it's what It just kind of debases the, the term experiencer. It just means something happened, you think, but you can't prove. And so what? This is the mother load, folks. You can find out. You can try and prove it wrong. But you have to dig in to find out. You got to. And guess what? You don't have to trudge through the Sonoran Desert. You don't have to have a mule and one canteen to get you 20 miles. It's all. There's so much free stuff that you'll never make time for all of it. And yet it's all there. And then if you decide to really learn what it's about, the books why the experience or cartoon stories for what i've had look i can say i've had ex experiences that are very unusual and actually i have evidence about the information i got in 72 that's come true since then specific stuff the metaverse zuckerberg 1972, it was all described to me, right down to the computers and the chairs you'd have and virtual reality, interactive with holograms, no glasses. And I didn't even know what a computer was. So what? I have a book about it. That's nice. And I actually have some useful things about how you can use what this evolved into over 13 years when that particular voice came back and told me all that stuff and then i realized i was supposed to do these videos with people so they could access their own higher vision inwardly and then learn how to manifest it with technology starting in 1985 so i put a little book out very inexpensive you can use your cell phone to progress yourself and get into the spiritual creation energy teaching and then you don't need the technical tools but i got all this in 72 so when these people are coming forward and telling me about their BS stories with ETs and all the rest, I know it's B BS. Three different, you know, the healing modalities described to me in 1972 that all sequentially came true. But it's not, okay, that's interesting. And yes, oh, I can prove it. I, would, I don't know about what happened in 1972. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, I don't know if Dustin and Daniel and Ricky do, but I certainly don't. I'd love you to just give us an overview of what happened. You know, Well, in all fairness, look, I would love to tell a story because it's, it's pretty, it was life changing for me. I but imagine. I don't think this is the time to do it. There's four of us. Here are five of us, whatever our number is right now. And I'd be glad to do it. So we could set up a separate thing, either you know, with you, Joanna, or with Daniel and Dustin, because it, it turns out to be rather an interesting story. And I've had, I've been within 20 feet of one of the play hour and monitoring craft and all this stuff. But that's interesting. That's interesting. But it isn't as important as this. I put aside whole chunks of my life where I've done lots of interesting stuff. Not that I threw them out. I just said, this is more important than my personal accomplishments on a global level. 
all my personal stuff's important to me. I've invented stuff and I've been added to the game. Air pollution? I already had an animated series of two friends and I pioneered, wrote in 1968, 69, tried to sell it to Hollywood and they said, wow, really nicely done, but who cares about air pollution? It was based on space heroes, way ahead of this curve. But when you recognize some singular person who's way ahead of all the curves and who has material of global importance, then you set your ego a bit to the side, pursue, I write songs, I've written 115 songs, recorded songs, written for people. Great, I love that. But I'm not going to let it get in the way of this material. You keep doing my thing in other realms. I do a whole bunch of stuff with health-related stuff and all that. This material, no cartoons here, no distractions. It's this real, as far as my future self thing, and I'm, I'm on a copyrighted record. I even told the story in 1987 to a, uh, one of the New Age newspapers in LA. I tell, it's all there and everything in there. It's all come true. Boom, 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 boom. Whatever it was, it was, I got that. Probably some part of my consciousness that it called itself, it's my future self and told me about things that were going to happen and they happen. I had to be, make that useful. So I found a way to make it useful to people. I did video sessions with people who came back a year and six or six months later and told me, hey, I used this and this is what I did with it. Just like I did in my session. I made it happen. Yeah, uh -huh, good. Great, glad to hear it. And I moved on to do something else. And now I, oh, I'll write a little book and anybody can do it. So that's the way it's all about you get back in touch with yourself as your own highest authority, not Billy Meyer and not the player. You have to filter that through your own consciousness and take responsibility for thinking through that. And you own your own highest authority. That's you. And I literally created the process where people could go face to face with themselves and interact with themselves visually audio visually 1985 you did a whole bunch of that stuff so be glad to anybody wants to do a, a little show about that i i'd be delighted and I'll, i even have a book out on it it's on amazon it's on my website no, i think Very you should so organize that then daniel and dustin <laughs> yeah no we'll definitely organize that have you back joanna yeah if you yeah, like oh, yeah. i'm sorry fun. look i yeah. I, I just because I can't stop it. I got to tell you. <laughs> Go ahead. Please. Do it. It's part of a two pronged program that I created. And I created something else called, originally called Standing in Spirit or the Consciousness Workshop. I asked Billy if I should do it separately from this material. And he said, No, do it every opportunity you get. It's part of the spiritual teaching. I said, Okay, fine. So I've got two things that I'm working on getting the timing to bring again forward to work in conjunction for things that people can use in conjunction with this work well that Good sounds lesson. great and maybe we can hear all about that on the next session or whenever the guys right are it. yeah i mean if you're near enough <laughs> just now, be glad to take the details cool yeah let's we'll, we'll schedule something up okay yeah well we we'll, we'll wrap it up here for now and uh we'll uh well glad Good i can talk just for the last bit <laughs> We got Ricky here. Thank you again, Ricky. Thank for you sitting guys in. very much for having me on. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure, especially to Michael and Joanna. I'm a, a fan Thank of you, you as well. I enjoy both uh, watching both of you guys, and uh, maybe we could get get back together on another topic some other time. But thank you yeah. for the for the invite, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, no problem, dude. This is great. I'm glad I can have everybody come together and talk. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. thank you guys well, thanks for that and then i look forward to that next session actually <laughs> yeah cool i'll send you an invite joanna and you guys have a good night and day all right you folks. all right yeah. okay. okay yeah bye, bye. everybody bye bye, bye.